And good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cloud Chats. This is episode 35, titled Rust, Brave Search, and What's Next in JavaScript. How's everyone doing today? Doing good. Doing good. 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 So I was chatting with my co-host before this that my screen keeps freezing, and I am watching my GPU randomly peg at 100%. Um, I have no <laughs> idea why, so we're going to get to deal with that during Cloud Chats today. So, oh, cool. um, and it's Brave. My Brave browser is oh. taking up 100% of my GPU, and I've only got like five windows open. So Electron is just doing um, all the work today. Windows or tabs? Tabs. Well, three windows, because I've got like split screen on this one and then one over here, but there's like one, two, three, four, five, six tabs open. So I'm I'm not throwing shade here. But this is brave. Yes, or but it's never known for trying to make money out of your browsing experience in weird ways. <laughs> in weird ways is right. Yeah, but I've never seen it do this before. So we'll see Come if it keeps over doing the it. edge. <sighs> you just keep saying that. that I th not it's the only, same thing. Not only is it weird <laughs> that you're an edge person, but it's even weirder because you're an edge on Mac person. And you're a front end dev at the same time. <laughs> oh my but goodness! It, it's it's just Chrome, but they sleep tabs. That's like it. Hmm. That's smart. Try it for a day. You might like it. I I should try it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's go ahead and start with our. Oh, great! I didn't click save. With our hello world. Uh, what is your favorite Halloween costume you've ever dressed up in? And tell us in chat, because we're right around the corner from Halloween. Yeah, and if you haven't already, say hey, tell us where you're from, and if you have a favorite Halloween costume from yeah. the past. Hey, Perdumna. Hey, Eaglish. Uh, welcome. <laughs> Mason, you say that, you know, we're getting close to Halloween. It's October 28th. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, it is. Are, are, are you saying... Week, but time flies. <laughs> Yes, time does fly. Not only are we getting closer to Halloween, we're getting closer to the end of Hacktoberfest. Um, That's sad. So, yeah. I'm happy to report I have two PRs. Last Woo! week I had zero. <laughs> two of mine have matured. I'm waiting on the other two. Um, but I may. But I know they'll get there. So that's exciting. Chris, I am gonna log in and check my progress because I have one that got accepted. Nice. Um, and nothing beyond that, but I am on it. Sweet. You're sweet. So, favorite Halloween costumes. What do we have I, for I, that? I'll go first. So, I think it must have been in 2019. I went as Todd from BoJack Horseman. So, if you haven't seen that show, it's an animated show. Uh, a lot of the characters are like half human, half animal. Like, BoJack Horseman has a horse head and a human body. But Todd is... Uh, like this, like, uh, he's not unambitious. He's like a guy who lives on Bojack Horseman's, uh, couch, but he has a yellow hat that he always wears and like a little bit of stubble and a red hoodie. So I enjoyed the heck out of putting that costume <laughs> together. <laughs> wow. So you, that, 2019. That was recent too. I, I don't think I've done Halloween costumes in a very long time. I'm well, boring. I remember I'm that, a boring I person. I remember that Halloween party in particular because it was at this place in Denver called Casa Bonita. If you've ever seen South Park. South Park. Like, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie used to talk about that all the time. <laughs> so it's this weird, it's this like uh, weird uh, restaurant in a strip mall, like in a suburb of Denver where you, you go in and you order food and you like get it on a conveyor belt and then you go in and there's cliff jive divers they have like this fake cliff and a pool at the bottom and they have arcades and it's it's a very unique experience but, okay so uh, it's real what's what's on south park is actually real it's real oh it's real and actually oh. the, the casa Bonita, the company who owned it filed for bankruptcy during the pandemic oh. and trey parker and matt stone are buying casa Bonita now <laughs> well of course they have to they spent all that time making episodes about it like <laughs> like the, it's funny when you have to buy your own source material. Um. <laughs> so that's why I remember that party so vividly. It was there. 
All right, that is a, a long lot of stuff from me. So somebody else, what's a Halloween costume you've dressed up in that's that's memorable? I was just going to call out Andrew in chat who uh, said a ninja when, across two messages here, they were eight years old. Nice. So that is kind of, I don't know, to <laughs> me that's kind of optimum dressing up for Halloween age. It is. It is a good age. We When I was in college, my professor obviously hated fun. Um, my, I, stu I studied trombone uh, in music before I moved over to computer science. And we we gave a studio recital where everyone did um, like so like prepared, did, prepared a solo and performed a solo. And if you wanted to hear three hours of mediocre trombone accompanied by piano, it was the place to be. But he also always hosted it on Halloween night and we had to dress up, which is why I'm like, why did you hate fun? Because like who's who's going to and it was always empty. We played to an empty room because nobody was going to be giving up Halloween for trombone. Um, I didn't even want to, but at the, my first year there, I dressed up as Steve Jobs. It was right after he had passed away. Like, like he had, he had passed away. Like the, that f the fall I was in like my freshman semester. And that was when I dressed up as him. And like, I think I still have that turtleneck. I was about to so, say, was it the black turtleneck and like, it's a know? black turtleneck and circular glasses, which were actually a lot Iron harder to glasses. find like at the they're, time. They're more, they're more back in fashion now, but in yeah, they were not easy to find in 2012. In yeah, <laughs> yeah, 2012 was not an easy way to find them. So yeah, that was my favorite one. It's the only one I can remember right now. So that's why it's classified as favorite. <laughs> Ooh, uh, we said that Pr Praduma said the GitHub Universe and Cloud Chats is the same time. Well, you, I think you came to the right one. We're a lot right more one. entertaining. Yeah, uh, both are on demand. So you know, we will talk Either about GitHub Universe. Yeah, also, Perduma, if you want to give us live updates about what's being announced, uh, I would like that. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> when's, when's the day two keynote starting? Pretty soon. I think, yeah, I think we're competing with GitHub Universe, which is <laughs> cool. Okay, which means it's a great day to be trying to win some stickers. So, yeah. <laughs> Chris, have you got a favorite Halloween costume? Yeah, um, I don't really remember many of mine, but I... It was like a week ago where my niece had a costume on and I stole part of it and <laughs> it is now my favorite. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, yes. <laughs> so this is what she dressed up as was Boo from Monsters, Inc., mm -hmm. the purple mm -hmm. thing. And <laughs> this is what uh, I looked like in the costume. So let me stop my screen. And this was this was me. I don't know if you can see. Oh, wow. <laughs> but the helmet was so fun because it had like the teeth and they were like frilly and the head would like bob over and it had oh, the eyebrows. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so that was, I just had so much fun with that uh, mask. That was great. Uh, that is you, really Matt? good. I, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever really dressed up for Halloween. It's, I don't know, maybe some other Brits in chat can correct me here, but it doesn't feel like it's a really big thing in the UK. Like, Everyone goes out, all the kids go out and go and do trick-or-treating, but a lot of them don't dress up. It's more just about, you know, like an excuse to go out for an evening and visit other houses mm -hmm. and get some chocolate. And but and you just don't dress up. Man, well talk, that, that sounds like the sounds like <laughs> teenagers who are like they just come up and they've got a pillowcase and you're like, okay, here's a chocolate bar, please don't egg my house. So Oh well, you see, <laughs> teenagers around here generally end up just rioting for the evening. Like there's there's no firecrackers going off in the evening. Most houses will be covered in egg in the morning. Very British. <laughs> <laughs> well, this year I'm going as Matt. See, it's not too hard, really. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I think dude. we should get we should get like hmm? we should make some masks uh -huh. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try. We Aww. should all just well, you have to you have to change your avatar, but I think we could all just turn off our cameras and be Matt today. <laughs> Oh, this been really confusing. <laughs> I'm laughing at this way harder than I thought I would. So, <laughs> oh, I can. Oh, I can. I can. I can. Aha! <laughs> We're all Matt today. <laughs> okay. Can anyone well, tell it's the end of the year when we may be a little bit overworked and sleep deprived? <laughs> Uh, I anyway. would like to get a mask that has like a popsicle stick holder with the with Matt's avatar. 
I'm Let's pretty sure. Okay, we will have ones. we will have those for next uh, next Shark Week. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, next time, right, well, next we... time I come in person, I'm going to get one of those so I can just turn up as me. <laughs> oh, thank you for laughing at us. <laughs> yes. Shall we jump into some news before? Yeah, we here we go. Okay. Here we go. I was like, <laughs> it's time to push the button. It's time to push the button. So, yes, it's time for the news, the weekly section where we go over all of the new things in the news that are interesting to us or space related. And again, we're going to play our favorite game. Is it JavaScript or not JavaScript? So, and starting off as always with our releases, Node 16. I wonder if that's JavaScript. Huh. So, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite sure though. Okay. Codename Here we Gallium. Go. Yeah. So specifically, uh, Node sixteen thirteen zero has been released, um, which I don't think has any diff between the last sixteen X release, um, but is now marked as the active LTS release for Node, uh, codename Gallium. So it is now the active LTS, and Node fourteen is the maintenance LTS, um, which was changed from fourteen being active and twelve being maintenance. So heads up that 16x is now your LTS release. Cool. How long do the LTSs last for uh, node for node projects? They get a year of active LTS and then another year and a half of maintenance LTS normally. That's interesting. Okay, I had a conversation with a friend yesterday about how LTSs seem to be getting shorter, or maybe I'm just accustomed to CentOS being LTS for a century. Um, <laughs> because like I, we were looking at Python versions and like Python 3.6, which was like the first Python 3 that I used is ending of life this year, like December. Yeah. But in Python has a five year L, uh, support cycle. They don't, they don't have an LTS. They just have five years on all of their thing. And I was like, is that enough time? Chris, but if it, you jump to about, I'm wondering if the release calendar is here somewhere. Like the main menu? Yeah. Or lower? The, the main menu. Uh, releases. On the left. There you go. Hmm. Oh, that's nice. So yeah, there, there's there's the release calendar for you. Oh, so okay. actually, twelve is still LTS maintenance for a bit as well. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. That's, well, that's good that's to know. Nice. Is that a Gantt chart? Yes, I guess. <laughs> that's. I only we'll table that. that for. <laughs> we'll table that for another time. <laughs> I'm always interested in the different names of the data visualizations. It's nice to know some of them. So I never knew they had names. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, uh, let's, yeah. let's go on. Is it JavaScript? It's JavaScript. It's next 12. It's more JavaScript. <laughs> Nothing but JavaScript today. <laughs> so next 12 is released. Take it. I don't know. Ooh. Take it away, Matt. Chris, do you want to talk about this or shall I talk about it? Uh, Are you the bigger fanboy here? I'm a fanboy, yeah, but I'm. I will say this release didn't really get me fanboying too much. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it seems like a lot of setup for what could come in the future. Uh, a lot of React 18 stuff, which has been in the works for years now. Hmm. Um, like it's been in the works so long that I kind of don't have hope for it. I'll. I'm hmm. like, show me when it's ready. I don't want any more like betas or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the Rust compiler looks cool, and I tried it out on one couple of projects, and it is faster. Sweet. Nice. I said that was the only thing that really stood out to us when we were watching. It was like, "Ooh, new compiler. We want that because our builds are really, really slow." <laughs> this is a very basic question, but what is next? <laughs> uh, so next is a framework built on top of React that gives you some. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like if you start a React project, you probably have to piece together some things like the router, like um, mm -hmm. uh, code splitting, a bunch of other stuff. But Next just throws it all into one package. Uh, oh, that's really nice. good developer experience. Very cool. I yeah. did write some React in like 2018. <laughs> um, this is interesting right here. The React server components, they've been working on this for a while, the React team. But... Once this happens, we can ship fully static websites where there's no JavaScript at all. Like right now, oh, wow. uh, there is a little JavaScript. If you use a static site generator like uh, 11T, it just spits out HTML, no JavaScript. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's what this would be able to do. 
hopefully. Oh, very cool. I mean, I will say next in its current form can also do pretty much full static. Like if you do static props for stuff, it still spits out JavaScript, but <laughs> you can turn it off. You can turn JavaScript off in your browser and it'll still work. Mm. But yeah, I think yeah. Mason Mason dropped off. I think so we lost Mason. Let's... Do you think his GPU? Let's go on. Up? Oh, I thought I he, he just was wasn't. Like... He saw JavaScript and <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "I'm gonna just relax for a minute." So, so well, let's go next? on to the next thing. Yeah, and I'll make the sound. Ready? Pew! <laughs> <laughs> Mason, oh, Mason owns all the sounds. Mac OS Monterey. Yeah, all right. All right. I was telling some people on the call before we went live that I downloaded this on my personal uh, MacBook Pro last night, but I went to sleep while it was downloading and I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. <laughs> Chris, you've been driving the beta for ages, right? I've been driving the beta since uh, first public beta. Uh, nice. And honestly, it's it's pretty much the same. I would say the the cool updates are if you have iOS 15 on your phone and you have Monterey, which I should do because I'm not on Do Not Disturb right now. Uh oh, go away. Um, <laughs> where look, are the focus look. modes? Yeah, so right here <laughs> you have focus oh, modes. So that's nice. I manually set these up. So for work mode, I have like Slack notifications are on, but messages are off. Um, mm. And they sync between phone and Mac now. So that's cool to see. Okay, that oh. is extremely handy. Also, I've cool. noticed it was syncing between my Apple Watch and iPhone, but sweet that mm. it also syncs with Mac OS now as well. Yes. And yeah, you can't. It's amazing how having no notifications on like improves your day. Oh my uh, gosh. It makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> what are the other big headline features from the release? Let's see. Ah, they they have I, I, I think the so belongs to the keynote. So good. <laughs> um FaceTime. Share oh, play. Yeah, the FaceTime oh, movie nice. watching thing. <laughs> Descriptive. <laughs> I know what you meant. <laughs> nothing really, nothing yeah. new. Nothing really I think, I think we talked about this on a previous episode when it first got released um, in the keynote. But yeah. Welcome back, Mason. Welcome back. We, we, <laughs> reached, we, we reached all the monitors turned off. I had muted myself because I was doing something. <laughs> we couldn't do anything. So I had to do a hard reset on the computer and just start over. So. Nice. Yeah. We're, we're going to start a Twitch... Um, Goal fund for like <laughs> new graphics new card. GPU. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, I've gone for five <laughs> minutes, but that's all. Okay. <laughs> uh yeah, new cool. Safari, which oh yeah, I new don't Safari. Think any of us use? Oh, cool. I use Safari on my phone. Yeah, yes. that's the only place I use. But so I use it on desktop when I need to debug stuff. Because like oh. I dra I daily drive Firefox, which for example has built in DOH. So if I want to mm -hmm. test whether my system DOH is working correctly, I pull up Safari because I know it's just using system settings. Nice. I always forget about this quick note thing that's like well, Whoa. graphically messed up. <laughs> graphically <laughs> disastrous. <but. laughs> uh yeah. Yes, but, like, uh bleep in chat. Uh, happy they roll back the new top of Safari. Mm. Definitely a controversial bit to the update. Um, is it still here though? Like, I so think it, I saw isn't it. this what's in the keynote right here? That's wasn't that the controversial one? I can't remember. I think the the phone moved it to the bottom also. Hmm. Oh, it didn't add a Captures. setting to change that though. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there you go. Mac OS Monterey. It's available to download now. Uh, yeah, and I haven't seen too many, I haven't seen any actually compatibility issues, so that's good to see. Yeah. I think so, Catalina did the big ones. <laughs> the, the, the new MacBooks, though, <laughs> they've been interesting. <laughs> I think we mentioned are last they, week. Uh, are they having issues? So, so the notch at the top, right, which we said last week, Apple had confirmed your cursor just goes underneath it. Turns out your menu <laughs> bar does too, including like oh, no. tabs for your Windows. <laughs> So no. you can just do stuff under there. Especially on the Safari design. Yeah. 
So uh, th that's interesting. <laughs> we'll see how they fix that. What's next right, in the news? Ne uh, next next is not. Yep, yeah, uh, it's JavaScript. It's always JavaScript. <laughs> it's always JavaScript. Gatsby. Uh, Gatsby. Uh, Matt, are you a Gatsby user? So the current dub 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 site is Gatsby, um, but we're moving to Next. Mm. Hmm. I've never really played around with Gatsby. Like I don't work much on the dub 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 site, so never really touched it that much. Hmm. I yeah. I've heard people who use it really like it, but I was when I was shopping around, I decided between Gatsby and Hugo, and I just wanted to be writing in Golang, so I, I chose Hugo. <laughs> is Gatsby a static site generator? Yes, Gatsby is a static site generator, very similar to Next.js. Um, I guess it leans more to the static site generator, but recently they have been moving to more of like the Next.js way of, of being like a full stack JavaScript mm -hmm. where you can server-side mm -hmm. render things. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say I have an old... Gatsby project, and I have a bunch of old Next.js projects. And jumping back into the Gatsby project, they do things very much a Gatsby way, and Next kind of leans to more of a pure JavaScript way. Mm. I had a hard time jumping back into that old Gatsby project because I had to remember all the extensions and the way they things ran. Yeah, I so say like having not not really worked with Gatsby too much, but worked with React quite with Next quite a bit. Next feels very vanilla react mm -hmm. i really like that um but yes gatsby for gatsby 4 here looks like it's kind of looking at what next does and implementing that in gatsby's fashion yeah i'll have to go and try to upgrade that old project see how easy it is yeah i use hugo for static site generators and i think it's because i saw a friend do it um, and I was like, oh, we'll use that one. Sounds good. Like, so interesting. Yeah. And one last release. Is it JavaScript? This it's one's not. for Perduma. It's not JavaScript. <laughs> it's Rust. <laughs> Rust 1.56.0 is out. Ooh. And Rust 2021. So I guess they have like yearly releases as well. Like I'm, I'm not aware of the Rust release cycle. Nor am I. <laughs> I think okay. yeah, it's it sounds like they do a once a year stable, properly stable release. Hmm. Would be That's the not wording, a bad idea from what the wording is here anyway. Um, so I guess kind of similar to like Ubuntu's release cycle, but they do their six monthly. And then any um, interesting new stuff? I, I'm, I'm sure there wouldn't is even robustic. know. <laughs> think, yeah, yeah, we need a rust rust person to. Yeah. One of us needs to, to go know. rust mode. <laughs> We talk about it enough. I, I just true. End up doing it. I just went Golang mode yesterday. Like I'm finally, <laughs> I finally made it to Golang, and I've been trying to learn that language for three years. You've It'll heard take you go another Golang three mode like thirteen times now. I know it. I finally <laughs> made it. I did a tech talk on it yesterday, and it was brilliant, and I loved yes. it, and it was actually really fun. So like, I finally made it. It only took a, two years of working here. <laughs> By the time I get to Rust, there'll be a new language. <laughs> well, no, everyone I, will be I, everyone will be writing Elixir. I, I feel like I'm going to end up learning some Rust now because it's being used by Next. Mm. I end up poking at far too many of the internals to Next, and I feel like at some point I'm going to run into an issue that means I need to understand Rust. <laughs> Can Rust feed in a web assembly? Yes. yes. That's one of its big draws. Um, yeah. And the fact that it's, you know, just fast. Noko says, good to be here. Rust mode has not been initiated yet, so we're not the only <laughs> ones procrastinating on Rust mode. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but, you know, my Twitter timeline, Rust mode has been initiated for many years. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you know, it's a really, it's a fun language. I looked at it once and it looked scary and I ran away. So. <laughs> well, we had him on uh, a few months ago. My friend Brooks is a Rust guy, but he. Oh, yeah, we did. He, the way he set it up was he decided to live stream for an hour, like four to five times a week at learning rest. So that was a, that's a huge commitment, like outside of his job. So um, I think it does require just a ton of effort, especially early on when there's not a whole lot of community tutorials or uh, it hasn't become sort of yeah. uh, the lingua hmm. franca. Well, the, the Rust community. has some of the best documentation in the industry. Mm, like, I don't. 
they don't have the best marketing set. I wanted to see just a little code, and it's taken <laughs> you're in the four docs clicks. in the standard yeah, I library. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see like some the homepage code. Does nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Most. Oh, maybe. Oh well. Wow. <laughs> an install command, and that's it. Oh. Here we go. Oh. I'm wondering. I, so I'm wondering about this color scheme, but I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to say too much because still, it's a well. choice. It's it, it was a someone made that choice. <laughs> it's they they took a picture of real rust in the real world. It's also is really funny to note to note how the marketing is different between like because we're used to going to like more I'm not gonna say user friendly but more front end style stuff and you see oh here's how you do it immediately. Rust knows their audience. <laughs> you know I guarantee you the man page has plenty of yeah. amazing demos because they know exactly who they are. I mean Chris, if you go back to the Rust homepage <laughs> and then pull up like Gatsby's homepage, it's just. They're very much catering to the right audience. That's my homepage. Yeah, like that is a very kind of we're a fancy front end. Yeah, thing. and Ru Rust is a we're a Rust we're a we're and a Rust funky, homepage is just we're a know. fast back end. Who cares? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this, this padding is just hurting me. Like on the top right here is very small, <laughs> and the bottom is giant. Oh, uh, this is what happens oh, when you have I back in. Now I can't, back in. I can't unsee it. <laughs> All I see is padding when I see sites now. That's like my matrix. Is this is what happens padding. when you have back end developers write front end code? Because mm -hmm. you get you get stuff that makes his Chris's eyes bleed. So, but the site function <clears throat> does what it needs to do. Yeah, it's anyway, the right this audience. Is not site review. <laughs> Look at yeah, this. Yeah, we, we, right we, <laughs> we fell down site review for okay for let's keep rest. Going. Let's Next get one, <laughs> they, we have a beta of the React. I'm gonna shoot the laser again. <laughs> <laughs> beta React docs. So, hey, Mason, uh, play your favorite game. Is it JavaScript or not JavaScript? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, so what is? Oh, well, okay, we've got light and dark mode. You already won me over. So. So this is beta for a, a rewrite of the React docs? Or yes. am I missing something? Or is it a beta for React docs? Full stop. <laughs> <laughs> they just not had docs up until this point. A little, they, little, salt, little salty, but... They had docs, but they did not have docs. They were not great. Um, I see. Which is great for any individual creators out there because they got the traffic. Mm. But this is a better job for sure. And, and the old docs... Or I guess the current docs are on React class components, which is a 2018, 2019 thing. Mm. So they're outdated. Uh, uh, okay. and, and this fixes that. But I mean, I mean, writing good docs really is like a science and an art. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Technical like writing I, is a skill, and oh, you have to hone sure. it. Uh, so yes, uh, oh, yeah. shout out to all you docs people out there. I know DigitalOcean has a whole team that just does docs, and it makes sense to me why. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's easy to talk smack about it, but it's hard to make good ones. <laughs> oh, these, these are beautiful. That, that was beautiful. That was nice. that was really nice. It's the edges all just work. It looks visually very clean. Yeah, I wonder what they're using. Yeah, I like that code fork. sandbox. What's fork? Press the fork button. That will tell us what oh, it is. Oh, good call. Code Sandbox. Code Sandbox. Sweet. The original uh, GitHub code spaces. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to go to it. I need to run stuff quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you go to react.new, Code Sandbox. No nice. way. I love the .new domain. I do too. They're my favorite. I wonder if anyone has like rickroll.new. What um, does it do? Upload new yeah. video to <laughs> YouTube? <laughs> Here, yeah, I'll try true. it. Don't try that's it in true. case it's something bad. I'll do it first. Rick roll. <laughs> ah, doesn't look like anyone has that domain. Rip. There you Opportunity. Go. Someone in chat You're... can do it. <laughs> and now, now... just got to find the price. <laughs> <laughs> it's dot new, so a lot. Dot new, they are. Next one. Uh, Honeycomb is using $50 million in new funding to bring observability to all. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Honeycomb is... Uh, an observability platform. Uh, they have some really charismatic people in charge. Uh, Liz Fong Jones is their mm -hmm. like head developer advocate. Uh, Charity Majors, I think, is the CTO. But uh, yeah, they got fifty million dollar Series B. Uh, it looks like it's uh, within. I think they got 
Oh, no, no. I guess this is their Series C. It's their Series C because Liz was upset that she, because it's Honeycomb and she can't say that they're in their Series B anymore. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, you've been waiting how long to make that joke on Twitter? <laughs> yeah. Far too long. Yeah, but they've definitely been the thought leaders in like the observability space. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I'm excited to see what they do. They have a cool product and they have a cool company and they have a lot of interesting employees and so what is exactly does it do? Is it like is this like a like like a data dog new relic kind of competitor? I yes, I believe so. Um, so yeah, where you can sort of install Honeycomb and in your infrastructure, and it can do infrastructure monitoring. Uh, it can do uh, application monitoring, uh, but also I do not have this off the top of my head. There's like a very specific definition of what observability is that's different than monitoring and logging, and the whole platform is built upon that idea yeah as soon as i heard observability i did not think of i thought more of like a real-time uh, web sockets type thing mm. but no i guess I've, apm sounds right yeah i have a, i have a my spicy tweet that i do every friday and one of them is observability that's just logging with extra steps <laughs> so <It's> not wrong <laughs> There we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. Literally, look, logs. There's Extra steps. Logs. <laughs> Query builder, bubble up, tracing raw data, and then mm. yeah, that looks nice. I will say these these tools have always been really fascinating to me. For some reason, I I've liked them. I remember the first time I saw Datadog do a demo at KubeCon in 2017, and I was just blown away. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. So <clears throat> exciting to see what they bring. I need to play with it. I haven't yeah, uh, yeah. played with Honeycomb yet, so we should we'll we add should, it to our list of things to to Yeah, we should do in. it on a live stream or something. Yeah. 10 out of sure. 10 on the mascot though. Yes, oh, yes. <laughs> it's not even it's not even just a bee. It's it's a it's a existential crisis bee. Yeah, oh, yeah. it looks like it's going through some stuff. <laughs> Should I be doing the honey? I like how they just like mash themselves in the pollen. <laughs> that is that, that's an amazing that's an amazing gif. Like that's, good. that's that that gif is mood. Like yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> may, may or may not be my current mood. <laughs> and our next one is, is it JavaScript? Kind of? Not really. Is it causing not... Mason issues? Yes. <laughs> yes. Brave removes Google as its default search engine. I had to reboot my whole PC to get it back. So, you know, um, we're no longer, you know, spiking a, what do I have? I have a 1070. You know, the fact, if you can use a 1070's worth of GPU power, with a browser, yeah. you're trying. You're trying. <clears throat> so, yeah, it looks like Brave has introduced Brave Search, and since I'm act an active user of Brave, now I have to look into this. I've thought about switching over to DuckDuckGo. I know Kim uses it because I've watched mm -hmm. her streams before. Mm -hmm. um, I've just like I don't know. I feel like I've given Google so much stuff now that like like they know exactly what I want before I know that I want it. Like, <laughs> well, so yeah, I have actually, I have consciously said like, okay, like I have opted into the Google data collection machine. Like yeah. they've got all my photos. They have all of my email. <laughs> I was, um, <laughs> I was doing that last night. I was in a, I was in a Pi Texas meeting and I was trying to type, I think like acquisition or something and I couldn't. And I was like, Google, what is the point of you listening to me night and day for you not to be able to know what I want to type when I want to type it? Yeah. I don't know. Google's getting really the like um, mm. auto-generated mm. text that they suggest uh, when I'm in a Google doc is starting to yeah. get creepy where it's like, yeah. I'll type M and it's like, do you want Mason Egger? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that's that's oh, good. But, but yeah. So wait, is Brave, does Brave have its own like search engine that it wants you to use? It looks like they're using, they just, that's what they've come out with. They've released Brave Search. Yeah. So it's on search.brave.com if anyone wants to try it. And I just did GitHub Universe as a search in Brave. So well, it's just got, like Google. It's got some rich stuff. It's got videos. Mm -hmm. And then here's DuckDuckGo. Which has nothing. Not, uh, the, Plain text. You, very hard to read also with the black. Yeah. yeah. Looks like looks like Google circa 2005. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And then here's Google. Which has, again, rich content videos, but also timings. Yeah. That's, yeah, they, that's they cool. have the magic box. I have a yeah. friend who who works on the magic box project, and it's pretty cool. <clears throat> also, the other thing I noticed with Google recently is that now when you 
do a lot of searches in quick succession, mm -hmm. it tries to guess what you're looking for and mm -hmm. prompts you to add extra keywords. That's creepy. Yeah, so I was doing some JavaScript stuff and then I started searching things without JavaScript on the end and it would just add JavaScript <laughs> for me. They did a great write-up on that, I think, at the beginning of the year with their new search updates. And it was contextual chain searches. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, the blog article made it sound really good. And it in practice, it makes sense. Yeah. But it just, it, yeah. I don't know. I feel like this, at this point, Google knows everyone. <laughs> it's not worth trying to escape it. Yeah. I, I go into my privacy settings and say delete everything after, like, 30 days. But by then, have they already processed it? I say, yeah. Oh like, yeah, they processed like it. Time for the ML machine to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? This next one though is spicy. Yes, oh, it's mm. spicy baby. <laughs> Lambda School only has a thirty percent job placement. Hold on. Oh, see, playing? this is why I love Brave because I because that's job all that all that is is JavaScript, and I just turn off scripts, and boom, I can get past almost. If you implement a paywall and in, in, uh, on the front end with no other type of validation, Maybe doesn't, gonna doesn't get stop you. doesn't stop me. <laughs> I get through exactly. it really quick. I, I literally that's why I use Brave because I can get right oh, past that. They that inject nice. the content <gasps> with JavaScript. Ooh, well, that was they they outsmarted me. I felt smart, but well, now now they well that that's actually not good because now they're stuck with us doing what everybody else does is only talking about the information that's in the title. Well, it's not even in the title because it, it, the information that we put in the doc was from a tweet from someone who had <laughs> access to the article. Uh, oh well, I the, in the doc we have the business. We don't have the tweet though. Yeah, I know. See, okay, we so... are, there were some documents leaked that suggested Lambda School only had a 30% job placement rate um, compared to the 70-something that they publicly yeah. claimed, which yeah. is down from the original 80-something they claimed before. Yeah, I've... They got uh... called out for it before. Um, I feel is... like there have been many, many Lambda School uh, controversies. Yeah, this is not like... the first one. Yeah. <laughs> Every month I'm like, what's, uh, what's Lambda School getting yelled at for? <laughs> yeah, I think they... They got a lot of the publicity because of their pricing model where they say, you know, you don't get paid until or we don't get paid until you get a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I think they changed that. Um, but I don't know. The stuff like this makes me a little grumpy because you talk about university and you should have a little bit of job placement help. And then you talk about boot camps. I feel like nobody solved that problem of placement after education. Yeah, I mean, university placements are probably like... 30%. Uh, I've heard that before. It's like, well, if we were holding, I don't think we hold universities to like account on job placement stuff. Um, whereas right. I think boot camps to get regulated in a lot of states in the US, um, that's part of what they have to report on. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess like the most ideal route would be like every company runs their own mini boot camp. It's a it's a it's a tough one. I have I've had friends. I have a friend who's actively looking at boot camps right now, um, mm. but like it, it's the one that's being done by the University of Texas, um, mm. which is a, which is a notable program. So, but it's like twelve grand, and and he doesn't even know if he's gonna like it. So our our like after talking with him, I was like, go take an entry level course at a community college for a couple hundred bucks and see mm -hmm. if you even like the content material, and then maybe consider going to a boot camp because fronting up twelve grand up front and not knowing you're gonna like it is a lot harder to do than three hundred dollars on a course. That's so, good advice, I'd say. Yeah, it's a tough one. And they if they don't teach you the, like the crucial skills for the networking side of create a Twitter account, mm -hmm. like get to meetups, uh, do open source, all boot of that camps? stuff is yeah. Well, the ones I I've I worked at a boot camp with. and we actually we were, were we had as part of our curriculum you have to have a Twitter account you have to tweet hmm. X number of times like I think it varies across boot camps but that's um, interesting because like yeah. I mean. Yeah, I guess if you're maybe from a boot camp, you're trying to become like that's the thing is like with with a, with with a collegiate degree, it 
it was i mean yeah we had we it wasn't that difficult like we had we had job fairs and people came mm -hmm. and we handed out resumes mm -hmm. and i got offered some crappy jobs at crappy places but you know i got offered the job um yeah. and then like if you go to like a, a top tier university like my, like i went to a middle of the line school my brother went to university of texas which is a top 10 school he never had to like he didn't have to look very hard at all to find a job because the name carries, and I have I have yeah. opinions about that. Yeah. But well, when people ask me about should I go to a boot camp, I'm evaluating these boot camps. I actually just tell them like you need to ask a lot of questions about their career services, uh, either program or department, because that's where it's at. Really, like, can they help you write a resume? Can they help you with the networking? Like, can they coach you around the things that are actually going to get you your you know your foot in the door? It's hard, probably. A, I have more experience mentoring people who are just at a boot camp, but it's probably hard right out of college. Getting your first job in tech is hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But, and, but once you have that first one, your doors in. open, right? And then you can just jump what, like, tech is so interesting where you jump companies and your salary boosts like 20%. Yeah, it's, it could be. But then I do feel like you eventually, as you progress through like number of roles or number of years in your career, you get to a point where you're like, Oh, I'm only working in this kind of environment. And uh, like, I'm getting more picky now, or I think I'm back at like, <laughs> well, there's like five companies I'd work for. So, uh, <laughs> okay. So I, I, I want to check something. Is the GitHub universe keynote over? <laughs> oh, you think we got some people who came over from GitHub? Yes, universe? It, it's, it's full <laughs> okay. If you it's are okay. watching the GitHub well, universe keynote, welcome. <laughs> well, well, yeah, welcome because we're welcome back because we, we we were a little bit lower on numbers this morning and then we we found out about GitHub universe, but now everybody's here, so it seems like it's over. So welcome. You haven't Thank missed the chance know. to win stickers yet. We're getting there, but as always, we take we forever to get through news. news. <laughs> so next one, hot last, reload is back in, in the .NET CLI. Yeah, uh, if if you've been following the open source scene in the last couple of weeks, you probably have heard about this at some point. Um, .NET is working on a new release, and as part of that, they pulled out Hot Reload from their CLI, uh, claiming to make it a Visual Studio only feature. Hmm. So they took a feature from the open source project and made it proprietary. Oh, I bet uh, that I bet that went over well. That went down really, really, really well with Fizzy. So well. <laughs> like a lead balloon. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was very evident as well from like these tweets here that those working on .NET also felt the same way. Um so it's a lot like of these are their advocates, yeah. Yeah, there's some sort of internal struggle going on. Um but after the community got up in arms, lo and behold hot reload has been added back um so if you're just using the dotnet cli hot reloads there again uh but i don't think it's the end of the story so we'll see what happens in the future it, it just like <laughs> it, it, <laughs> that just... chart <laughs> that illustration <laughs> uh, i mean microsoft I feel like in the last couple of years, especially <laughs> with the acquisition. I just saw the chart. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I understand why you reacted that way. Because I reacted the same way. I didn't understand it because it's small on Chris's screen. <laughs> and I have a visitor who won't go away. Oh, um, hey, Loki. So. Yeah, I feel like Microsoft in the last couple of years, especially with the acquisition of GitHub, it was like, all right, as the dev community, we're like learning to trust Microsoft uh, regarding open source issues. And now uh, I think... Uh, this looks like a step backwards. <laughs> yeah, I say yeah. it feels like we're putting maybe slightly too much trust into them. Yeah, we've got Zam <laughs> in the chat who said, uh, "Yeah, it seemed like it was too good to be true <laughs> that Microsoft yeah. was being." It's it's the cycle, right? You get you get the traffic, you get the people in, then you say, "Well, it's a bait and switch." Them. Yeah, it's a bait and switch. Every like, yeah, and it's not that hard. Just don't do anyway. I, don't I'm glad I was. Code, please, there's every now and then like we you know when stuff goes wrong in DevOps, we talk about HugOps, and I was like HugOps for the advocates uh, that work there right mm -hmm. now, because every time companies do stuff silly, um, becomes the advocate's job to try to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as Matt and I and everyone here lived last year, so yep. not me. I've only heard the stories. <laughs> yeah, it was, you're lucky. It was its own. I am feel. I feel very lucky. But I, I will also say though, right? 
especially open source it's one of those things where it takes a long time to build up the trust yeah and then one arguably quite small change to just throw it all away yeah or also yeah. even with hacktoberfest this year i did a lot of education in the denver tech community so i was like it's hacktoberfest people were like ah <laughs> i was like mm -hmm. wait 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 we've made some changes like let me tell you about them <laughs> oh my goodness okay well that is all the news we have today we're going to take a quick break and i do mean quick so don't run away Very quick. as we talk like literally like less than 20 <laughs> seconds you have time go now your time's up <laughs> It's got a little groove to it. It's nice. We're back. Like so it. we're back. Yes. Uh, we changed order in the process. We did change order. I'm. Uh, let me fix that. That's weird. Uh, oh, we haven't been using our. There they are. <laughs> I hadn't seen that the whole time, Matt. So I was been I mean, the whole time. You've, you've okay, just well, got like partial blindness to it because it's been there so long. <sighs> Uh, I just, I just wanna. Is... I. I... <laughs> no. Uh, Deutschendorf fart ops for the win. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, uh, oh my goodness gracious! Anyway, here we go. It's time for our game of the day: true or false. This is the chance you have to win some Sammy stickers. So everyone, go to Kahoot.it and enter in the pin one seven three two zero four two. And if you win our game, it's 10 true or false questions. Uh, if you win, you will get sent a package of Sammy stickers. And today's theme is, I, I originally called it Retro Tech, but I'm changing that name to Things That Happened Before Matt Was Born. Oh, um, <laughs> good. Uh, oh, good. I've, I see what so, this is doing. <laughs> Yes. Uh, actually, some of these maybe not. Like, I think the latest one here is like in 2010, but still. Retro Tech. So go ahead and join. And Kim has her word of the day. So oh, yes. Kim, what do we have today? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, inspired <laughs> by the new Rust compiler in, I think, the Brave. Uh, next. Uh, in Next. Um, yes, so the word of the week is compiler. Thank you for that beautiful overlay, Matt. So some definitions. A compiler is a software program that compiles program source code files into an executable program. It is included as part of the Integrated Development Environment, IDE, with most programming software packages. And the compiler takes source code files that are written in a high-level language, such as C, BASIC, or Java, and compiles the code into a low-level language, such as machine code or assembly code. So compiler takes a language <coughs> like JavaScript, and then, you know, changes it into machine code. How does that sound, everybody? Tell me about what compiler yeah. means to you. That sounds right to me. Yep, right. and we have we have the age-old question, but how do they compile the compiler? <laughs> <laughs> um, the answer Chicken to that is, the is there's, a small, there's a small mini compiler that they use to compile the compiler. Well, my favorite thing, though, is that quite a few of the modern languages nowadays compile themselves with themselves. Ooh, that's very Inception-y. <laughs> I'm just like, how does that work? <laughs> like, I kind of get it, but at the same time, surely there's a point where it won't work and then you need to <laughs> compile it from something else at some point. I don't know. Just bring in <laughs> Rust. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm also just come. I, I see Kim's cats and I'm like, black cats on the Halloween episode. That's a good one to yeah, go with. Like, that worked out pretty well. This is their season for sure. I have two black cats. Um, oh, there were some people in the chat who were asking about how do I get stickers? So Mason, how do people get stickers? You win the word of the week. So, or not word of the week. Sorry, you win the true or false thing. So go to kahoot.it on your phone or anything, computer, enter in the pin 173 -2042. We will be posting two, 10 true or false statements. You have to say if they're true or they're false. And the person who gets the most right and the quickest, which Matt will talk about in a little bit, because that's Matt's phrase, uh, wins. And you will basically email me with a screenshot of your winning screen, and I will send you a Sammy sticker pack. So, yeah, are we ready? I think we've got 16. We're doing, we got 17. That's good. A lot of, 
People here want their stickers today. Let's get going. Theme of the week, things that happened before Matt was born. <laughs> also known as Contact. Retro Tech. Also known I was as... born in 2001, just so Everybody else the feels stage. old. Oh my god, I graduated <laughs> high school in 2003. <laughs> <laughs> First question. Windows 98 could support up to a max of 2 gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you were Good paying Windows attention 98. at the start of the show... Yes, if you were, you already know this answer. I guess I wasn't paying attention then. This is false. <laughs> Windows 98 supported up to one gigabyte of RAM, not okay. two. Which, back in the day, one gigabyte of RAM was a lot. Like, you know, that would probably put you back a couple grand to get it. Um, but yes. Looks like Giving this. Leopard... Bold Fox inspired B. Uh, we're doing good so far. No one got that thousand points, so no one's just spamming. No nice one's to not know. spamming yet. Also, if you're just now joining, you can always join in because maybe people are doing bad. So join in at any time. And Matt, <laughs> say the bit about the thing. About the thing. Yes. So Kahoot isn't just about getting it right, it's about being fast. You'll see that there's a wide range of scores on the screen. And that's because some people press the button a bit slower than others. So get yes. it right, but press the button fast as well. Pat, press it fast. Here we go. Next question. Solitaire has been included on every Windows operating system since Windows 95. Oh, yes. That, that gif is, is speaking to my soul. <laughs> <laughs> has Solitaire been included on every Windows operating system since Windows 95? This is false. It has been included on every Windows operating system since Windows 3.0. Dang. So that wow. and that is the like early 19 like I think actually 1990. So Solitaire was one of the games that's been there for a long time. Wow. Yeah. That was before I was born. Uh <laughs> Bold Fox coming in, Brave Dingo giving Leopard still anyone's game. Trust me, I've seen these go any which way. <laughs> Red Hat Enterprise Linux was the first commercial Linux business. Uh, I hope I get this one correct cuz I got the other two incorrect. <laughs> I'm just going to use the excuse of that this was all before I was born. That's a very convenient. It was an easy way out for you today, Matt. So, <laughs> this is true. Windows Enterprise Linux was the first commercial Linux business that focused on offering support instead of paying for, like, you could use the operating system, but getting support and getting their curated list of packages was what they would you would get. That's still their selling point to this day, right? I think it is. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, enterprise, like, you know, enterprise means support. Whenever anyone says, what does an enterprise mean app mean? It means it has support. That's mm -hmm. the only support and SLAs. That's what makes it enterprise. Bold Fox still going up, but giving leopard bold gecko and brave zebra everyone, coming up. Everyone so. else climbed up the leaderboard apart from bold Fox. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so we will see. Here we go. The last DOS-based op Windows operating system was Windows XP. Okay, I don't, they're not. They're, they're lumping all the Windows versions together today. So well, it's anyway, random. I know, but still, like it's randomly doing it to make it look like this is a Windows quiz, and it's not. <laughs> was the last DOS-based operating system Windows XP? This is false. The last DOS-based operating system was Windows ME, the Windows Millennium Edition. For anyone oh, who remembers those days, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a phrase you haven't heard of in a long time. Windows XP was NT-based, so at the at the Windows ninety era, like ninety five ninety eight era, they split into NT, which stands for New Technology. We're so creative, um, which was Windows 3.0, 3.1, XP. Um, I, think, I think that was it. And then 9598 ME was the last of the DOS line. So we haven't oh. used Windows DOS in a long time. Oh, Bold Fox is on fire in a four correct, but Bold Gecko coming up with Epic Store trailing, so we can still do it. Next question. The processor that IBM created and used in its hardware was called Spark. Also, I'm yelling again because I don't have my noise canceling off was the processor that IBM created used called Spark. Utter silence. 
<laughs> oh, everybody got that one. That's a good question. <laughs> good question. <laughs> That's a good question. That is false. <laughs> IBM's processors were known as Power PC processors, Power 3, Power 4, Power 5. Sun Microsystems was the company that created the Spark based processor for their hardware that ran in the Sun OS operating systems. If you've never seen a Sun computer, they're actually really cool. Um, Witty Rhino was the only one who got it right and comes scooting up, but everybody else missed it. So there we go. Next question. Bless is a Perl command. Is bless a, a pro is bless an actual reserved keyword in Perl? Billy, I'm, I will say, don't worry. You're not the only one that's too young for these questions. <laughs> I'm sitting on a solid zero currently. <laughs> <laughs> this is true bless is the so pearl is odd i'm gonna call it oddly object oriented um <laughs> oh, oh it, yeah oh. It, it's, it's, it was added in i think as an afterthought so whenever you bless something it associates it with a class so you can create an object with the same attributes as a class but it does not become a class object until you bless it Pearl's weird. It was my first interpreted yeah. language. Um, I, I akin those to the days of like studying dark magic, and then I now I'm reformed. So, <laughs> uh, doesn't look like bold. Fo okay, people are catching on. Bold fox, two wrong in a row. Hopefully, but bold gecko and witty rhino, the polite enchidna, echidna. I can't say that word. And then giving leopard. How nice of you to be giving. True or false, dial-up modems have a maximum theoretical transfer speed of 56 kilobits per second. Yes. Here's another GIF that should... Oh, it's nightmares. Making me, making me think, <laughs> yeah, think about my early internet days. <laughs> you can't see that without hearing the noise. It's true. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right. I'm curious about this one. This oh, I finally true. got one right. <laughs> this is true. They found some clever ways to cheat the system and do like different types of lines, but theoretically dial up over telecommunications line, which was a sound based network transfer. If anyone can think about that, think about how fast the speed of light is, which is fiber versus how fast the speed of sound is explains why it's only 56 kilobits per second. So this is true. And when grandma got a call, the internet dropped. <laughs> yep. Happened all the time. I remember when we got DSL, which was when you could have internet and phone. That was a big deal. At the same time, because the landline, because people, the telemarketers had to call. So Bold Fox still up there, but there you're being caught. So our second, next question, eight out of 10. Canonical's first release of Ubuntu was in 2004 with Ubuntu 4.10, also known as Warty Warthog. You try finding any sort of gift that your gift game this. is solid, Mason. Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, costume right there. <laughs> That's a good. Oh yeah, you could be. What's the Linux penguin's name? Tux. Tux. You could be Tux, Tux. for Halloween. <laughs> This is Ooh. true. The first Ubuntu release was in 2004, and I, I I applaud them on the fact that they already had a stable naming and versioning schema um, <laughs> at the beginning, and Warty Warthog was the first release of Ubuntu. That's interesting, though. It's a dot ten release as their first. And they, released, now... they, they released in October. Yeah, and now dot oh four is their main release for the year. Hmm. Yeah, oh four is their main release for their LTS, but they, I mean, we we just got uh, 21 dot ten last week, yeah. Yeah, we just got 21.10. So like they still release dot tens, but the LTSs are dot fours. Yeah. So oh wow. Blib says, uh, I believe I received that one on a CD. Yeah, I know, I wow. know a couple friends that have that have like collected the CDs of old operating systems. And like I'm somewhat obsessed with old tech for no reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I would love to have those. Oh, it looks like Bold Gecko took over as Bold Fox falls behind. Witty Rhino coming up though. So we will see what happens next. Second to last question. The Java programming language was originally developed by Oracle. Was the Java programming language originally developed by Oracle? I think I know this one. I feel this like the first time. This, before. this is the first time I've said that about any of these questions. <laughs> yes, this week's this week's assignment were intense. These were intense oh, I got questions. It wrong. I didn't even this know is false. One I 
<laughs> Java does currently owned by Oracle, but again, one of my favorite companies, Sun Microsystems, developed J Java. And whenever Oracle acquired Java in 2010, they got a lot of things. Sun OS, um, uh, Java. There's actually a lot of really uh, cool, cool tech. Sun was way ahead of its time, but didn't know how to run a tech company. Um, and mm -hmm. if you look back in the history of tech, that's a very prevalent thing that we do not have the be I, the best tech today. There were things that were better that failed as a business that we lost. Um, I can't say any more without being accused of slander. So. <laughs> like Betamax um, versus VHS. Versus VHS, yes. <laughs> yes. So Bold Fox came back. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, but Oof. Bold Gecko is definitely still a chance here. Yes, so this is the last one. Bold Fox, Bold Gecko, and but Creative Ferret, if they both get it wrong, could still come up. Yeah. It's still, and so could Witty Rhino. It's anybody's game. Here we go. Last question. This one's going to make you think. A network switch is a device that replicates an Ethernet signal from any port to every other port on that switch. Is a network switch a device that replicates an Ethernet signal from any port to every other port on the switch? Oh, this is very specific. Mm. It is very specific. <laughs> this is false. You are thinking of a network hub. We've hubs don't really exist anymore you have to go out of your way to find one so in the like switches are basically known as smart hubs hubs at the old day would get in a packet frame and then just blast it as an any cast to every single person because it didn't have an arp table once we at once we got arp tables incorporated into switches we could know where things were designated to and we could just send the packet directly to the other person on the switch Oh my God, Mason, that was amazing. You know I, have, words. I have weirdly, so there's there are stories behind why I know all of this. Um, <laughs> because apparently when you're in college sitting in your computer lab and you turn on Wireshark and you see that one of the switches is misconfigured to be a hub instead of a switch and you can intercept SSH traffic, um, it gets you in trouble with IT security. Right, row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never point out to people who are bad at tech that they have made a mistake. Yeah. It just never ends well. It, yeah. Witty, Witty Rhino. Rhino bold Gecko, but did Bold it looks like Bold Fox pulled it out. If it's Toon Army Captain, I swear. Like I swear. Well, Toon Army Captain has said tricky questions today. So yeah. okay. Who's Bold Fox? <laughs> Whoever Chat? Bold Fox is, tell us who you are. Um, but what you need to do now is take a Oh, 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 what does that mean? Apparently, uh, oh, is, it, is it you again? Is it you again, Toon Army Captain? No, it looks it's like bleep. it's bleep. No, bleep it's bleep. bleep. Great, great, <laughs> awesome, fantastic, good. Uh, so if you have this, take a screenshot of your winning screen and email it to mason at digitalocean.com. Include your mailing address, and I will mail you a set of stickers. So, yes, you have to send me the screenshot to prove that you won. Um, and uh, send it to me. And, you know, if you didn't win this week, come back next week. There'll be more chances for more stickers. I just want to tell Chris the name that I got was Majestic Bunny, which is a great, oh. <laughs> great name. That is they a great name. <laughs> Chris says some bunnies, so that's why I'm telling Two him bunnies. about it specifically. That is, <laughs> that is a great name. And then, Both Majestic. <laughs> remember, what was it last week we had to look up with the... With the I don't remember what it was. Some weird <laughs> animals every week. We, think. we get we, we get some weird animals every week. I'm like, that's an animal, and people are like, yeah, well, okay. So, <laughs> our next segment is one that we haven't done in a while, but it's one of our favorites, and it's Old Man Yells at Cloud, which is a great segment. So, if you are unaware of our Old Man Yells at Cloud <laughs> segment, this is the segment where we go through Twitter and we scour the internets and the interwebs because we're old. Um, for all of the funniest developer memes of the week, and we relax to the, re react to them. So, fun fact, we had this queued up for last week, and then we spent so much time on news, we had to cut it out. So, we Sorry. you're going to, like, I guarantee you, I've forgotten almost all of the memes in here, so you're going to be getting some genuine reactions. I would so, also point out, we haven't really done much better this week with timing. 
<laughs> we're yeah. a little bit better. We're a little bit better. Okay. So we were just waiting for GitHub Universe to get out. We I plan I, I, all of this. I'm just gonna have to be stricter with y'all on the news segment and push you through it. So or just anyway. don't have like an entire page of news articles next week. Yeah, uh yeah, Bleeb asks uh yes, Mason at digitalocean.com. Here I'll post it again in the chat so you have it. Um but here we go with our first meme which is days since last time zone issue and the sticky note says negative one which i feel uh, that i feel is oh so true oh my gosh it's right there i i, I have a one of my best tweets that ever went on that ever made it on my twitter feed was think you hate a programming language try its time library then you'll be sure to hate it yes um I have, and I think that was whenever I was learning Go. Whenever I learned that you can, can you can do a conversion using the standard library, but cannot, but cannot unconvert it. That oh, is a, yeah, you <laughs> you can you can encode a certain you can encode a timestamp with this very specific function in GoLang, but there's a bug that allows you where decoding doesn't work. But remember, Go is so specific on backwards compatibility that it would magically start working and that would break backwards compatibility so they've never fixed it. Um, fun fact, a person that I used to... I also turned off the music because I feel like it was going to drive people nuts. Um, <laughs> uh, it's funny because I found that issue and then I went to the GitHub issue and I saw one of my old co-workers talking about it in the, and I was like, oh, yep, okay. So time zones, why do we have we'll them? Just They're awful. Though. Time zones aren't the worst bit daylight saving is oh. the worst. <laughs> that's so true and specifically australia just saying <laughs> why like australia seven time zones. zones oh my god what australia has seven time zones yeah it, it flips between like four and seven depending on the time of the year it's oh well, that's rough i mean oh, I just, no like the u.s has a lot of time zones but we have a lot of width <laughs> in yes. our land mass I mean, it's only Australia, have four. but yeah. they do theirs in like squares almost. It's bizarre. Yeah. Well, we have Alaska oh and Hawaii, which uh, are not part of the contiguous U.S. I but... always forget. Yeah, and, you know, we we should give those back. Um, well, you I always the, forget about them. You have the minor outlying islands as well, which are mm. one of one of the two ends of time zones. I can't remember if it's plus fourteen or minus twelve, but the U.S. owns one of those. Matt feels like he's been personally victimized by this. I, uh, yes, because you Hacktoberfest has happened. to deal with it. <laughs> Our next meme. This code is self-explanatory and doesn't need comments. And then and this says it's on a book. And as a subtext, it says, and other hilarious jokes you can tell yourself. That's pretty funny. I also like, love that it's volume two. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't catch that. I like that it's a giant book. <laughs> yes. There are a lot of... I, I, I would love to write this book we should write this book mm -hmm. we should we should write this book other book other hilarious tech jokes mm -hmm. you can tell yourself Aww. javascript the good parts oh <laughs> there's not a lot of good mean. parts to javascript <laughs> i know this is a little mean uh <laughs> say what you will about javascript <laughs> it's running the web <laughs> it works <laughs> it works sometimes it works yes most it of works. the time <laughs> Uh, senior dev, work on this task. Junior dev, what if I get stuck? <laughs> senior dev, ask me if you get stuck. A few minutes later, there's a deer through a fence. Two, two deer. Two deer. <laughs> senior and a junior. Oh, oh, I didn't even see the two deer. <laughs> uh, you know, I I hope my little brother is watching this because this has been his experience at his first job. Um, so I, if if not, I'm gonna send this to him later. So. <laughs> Uh, new programmers uh, yeah. <laughs> step on rake, rake flips. Experienced programmers doing all sorts of cool skate tricks down the stairs with their rake until it finally hits them in the face. <laughs> but it always ends with the rake in your face. It's always a rake in the face. <laughs> yeah, these these hit far too deep. <laughs> they do. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's They're just a silence. <laughs> Oh, 32 core CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, two terabyte NVMe drive. Wow, that's working fast. And that's Python, and I feel like it's a shot at me. <laughs> okay, that's, that's that's that is specifically Python code on that monitor. It, it, it's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, it is wrong. Python works very fast. It doesn't need this. And actually, uh -huh. we didn't even talk. Did we, Matt? You want to start? Oh. Like we can, we can First go. Time did... I will leave. You guys can fight. <laughs> oh my gosh, Matt! Out of, did yeah, we, it's out about of, lunch. Did <laughs> yeah, we talk about this last week? Have we talked about the recent Gil stuff in Python, Matt? 
Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, I will add that for next week's cloud chats because yes. we need to talk about that. But anyway, Python. This is also just developers who also think they need a, a big machine to use a web browser. So, well, um, I mean, depends what you're working on. For example, like I mean, GitHub. you have to restart your computer because of your web browser. It's six <laughs> years. It's it's six years old, and I've never reinstalled the operating system. There's crap <laughs> running on this thing that I don't even know what's here. <laughs> like, I look at my process. I'm like, oh, keylogger.exe. I should probably get rid of that. Like, ooh, yeah. Oh yes, I put this one in. Oh yes. <laughs> so oh, it's the sign guy. It's just cloud CC fun, and then President is that the Biden. CNCF? Is Holding up yeah. the CNCF yeah. interactive landscape, which every time I mention it, I say it makes me feel nauseous. It does. It like I'm getting, I'm getting like, I'm getting anxiety just looking at that thing. It's like here's all the things you need to be good at your job, and then you look yeah. at it, and you're like, well, I guess I'm just gonna go back to farming chickens. <laughs> exactly. well, it's just the other thing that gets me as well is like there's only one cloud native meme, and it is just the landscape. <laughs> yeah, so landscape. I believe we have another landscape meme in the slide deck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't get. I don't get this one. So it's it's is that Steve Buscemi? Who is that? That's Steve. That's Belushi? Steve Buscemi. That's Buscemi. Yeah. Buscemi. Okay, and he's, he's, he's the original thing. He's like, how do you do, fellow kids? Because yeah. he's an undercover cop at high school. <laughs> yeah, it says you guys floating some divs over here. So what does that mean? Mason, I sent this in a Slack message and tagged you, and I said, Mason, when he's trying to use Tailwind. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't that see that. I but... understand what it means. There's everything you need to know about Mason's front I didn't see I... Yes. Okay. Well, everyone... Okay. So this, is thing, not... thing, this is suddenly turned into make fun of Mason. Okay. The thing is that floating divs, uh, floating is basically saying, hey, you div, you go left or you go right, and then the rest of the content flows around you. Uh, Think of like images and paragraphs and the paragraph goes around the image. Floats have not been used or have not been recommended <laughs> for usage in like uh, five, seven years now. Seven years roughly, yeah, when Flex came out. When Flex came out, yeah. So this is very <laughs> old person I'm, coming into the high school. I'm, I'm putting it in my notes that Kim and Matt were mean to me, but Chris was kind enough to explain it to me. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, oh no, I hate this. I feel so seen by this. Yeah, it's the it, man. <laughs> it's the, yeah, it's it's uh it's 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 the the scene from uh Avengers Endgame, it's Captain America with GitHub, and it says the build has failed just like the previous build, and it's the future Captain America going, Yeah, I know, I know. Um <laughs> uh, as someone who failed with their GitHub actions yesterday during a live tech talk, um, yeah, I've dealt with this. And then I had to send it to Matt. And I'm like, Matt, what am I doing wrong? And it was really simple. And I just overlooked something. Mason had copied and pasted something without reading it. Yeah. <laughs> I've never I, done that. Yeah, no developer has ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it looked almost, ex to be fair, it was like identical. Like, because like my, the one that I had in my notes had a YAML error on line 13. And I was like, I don't have 10 years to figure out why there's a freaking indentation error on yeah. my YAML. It's so I'll just YAML. copy and paste the one from GitHub. But they changed one piece at the very, and I missed that piece. Everything else oh, yeah. was identical. So, like, I feel like that's acceptable. <laughs> this is not a fun, this is not like a laughy meme. This is a, I love this meme every Halloween. It's a great I meme. I do not understand this meme. If someone could explain it to me, I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> well, it's 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 doing all the Boolean logic. So it's like or, and, nor, nand, xor, x, nor. Um, and it's basically using a Venn diagram of a pumpkin and just showing you the parts that are true. Yeah. So like it's a, a, or an and are ones that people tend to use. If you like nor, nand, x, nor, those are electrical circuit logic gates they don't mm -hmm. tend to show up in like it would be not like the, the exclamation mark and or something in a programming uh, language like we what we don't we don't tend to use those but those yeah. are actual logic gates in circuitry yeah. oh, that's oh. If, when you learn when you learn boolean algebra and set theory you come across these and yes I think this venn diagram has been the best way i've ever seen yes. anyone teach this it is it is the best thing and like these are the these are these are one of those topics that i I don't know. I, they don't tend to get taught in boot camp. You don't. You don't get punished with set theory because most <laughs> yeah, people would, most people would walk out. However, I love set theory. It's one of That's my favorites. Well, I love set set theory and graph theory. My favorite things in math. Um, the pigeonhole principle. Nope. Um, <laughs> I want to call out a 
Avnish in chat real quick. Uh, this is what we need a form for user we submission do. for. OMG, that's yeah. Great. We're good. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah. We will. Yeah. We will set that up. We'll add it. So, and I'm I'm also going to show it at the end. But we have a cloud chats page now. Yay. Um, which will show. But yes, we will set up a, a form for that. Please don't <laughs> send. And if you send me bad things, I will be upset with you. Please and just don't. to answer uh, Roller's question in chat, those aren't SQL joins. No, they're not. But there is a very similar diagram that exists for all the joins and how they work, <laughs> which does uh, a very good job of teaching a very similar thing. I feel like this might be Kim. <laughs> My kidnappers, after bringing me back after I spent two hours talking nonstop about how to administer <laughs> Kubernetes. Just heard throw... that joke, like, uh, sometimes the kidnappers will bring you back <laughs> if yeah. you're annoying enough. <laughs> Yeah, if you talk nonstop about how to administer Kubernetes, you might get thrown through the window. <laughs> I love this meme. You go it's the the your the Star Wars episode three where Padme is saying, You going down a path I can't follow, and Anakin's in front of a door that has the Kubernetes logo on the front of it. <laughs> um yes, yes. If you there's also a great Dilbert comic where they talk about that, where he just the boss just comes in and says a whole bunch of words. It's like you don't know what those mean, do you? Uh. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all said something like that one really got me, or I feel that one. Yeah. <laughs> same with two yeah. more recap. This includes the it. true or false. This is a whole episode yes. of triggers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's another one. I used to deploy applications without containers. Sure, Grandma, let's get you to bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that one hurts. I don't like that. Yeah, I feel I feel <laughs> a little bit upset by that. Drag things through FTP to deploy. Oh my yeah, god, yeah. let's not talk about that. Like oh uh, no. <laughs> Chris, you just awoke a memory that I don't want to think about. <sighs> I used to have to teach that. Um Eve. okay, configuring development Kubernetes cluster, happy configuring production cluster, <laughs> sad. Okay. And it's a squid game meme, so we have to be up with our times. We're young and hip. But it is terrifying. Like, even if you're just doing the same thing you've just done, like staging or dev. Production is just so scary. Oh yeah, it is. It is mm. scary. <laughs> here's the here's the other here's the other uh, Kubernetes landscape meme. It's Jack and Rose on the Titanic. It's Jack. This is exquisite work as she opens the book, <laughs> and it's the Kubernetes landscape meme. CNCF love... interactive landscape baby. <laughs> uh, I love these like designed memes where it's just like all the white space in the world and. The most basic text. Oh, sure. I actually, I have the to say, I, to... I added this text in the slide because it didn't come on the image. <laughs> I did that, me. <laughs> oh, a lot okay. of Kubernetes memes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Simpsons against DevOps hadn't been doing it. It's the it's the Rick and Morty. What is my purpose? Robot meme, and it, the robot is Kubernetes. And it's what is my purpose? And Rick tells Kubernetes, you you start processes, and the robot's like, oh my god, yeah, welcome to the club, pal. <laughs> and I think that is all for the memes. All right, we are good with that. Robot. Put everyone through the emotional ringer of being a developer. <laughs> yes. And now I'm just going to show really quick. If you go to do.co slash cloud chats, we have a cloud chats page now. Woo. Wow. With my admin toolbar on the side. Um, wow. Tweaks. Yes. So we have a cloud chats page where you can view the previous episodes, get links to our subscription channels and stuff, learn about all of our content and where you can submit your rate my site. And I will add the rate my memes form to this as well. So, or send us, send us your memes. So thank you. I, I like rate my meme. Send us memes. <laughs> rate your meme. Yes, we'll do a rate my meme, and it, yeah. it, it how and we'll we'll rate it at zero out of ten DevRel tears. <laughs> <laughs> that I like. <laughs> that I like. Okay, so we have we we made it to what's on your mind. So here we go. Wow. We we have ten minutes wow. left, and we're doing pretty good. So what is on your mind? my friends starting with matt as always would someone do me a favor of pulling up the link that's in the doc oh hold on avnish uh submitted to rate my site so we might have to Ooh, bring we'll, that to we'll, do, at some point. we'll look we'll look at the submissions from yeah and get, and get to that so uh chris can you pull up the site for matt wait what's your the one that's in his uh in what's dark. on my mind oh on the yeah. what this doc? is a really cool site okay i'm on it 
uh, share. So the context of this site, for anyone, that we, we talked about time zones already, um, but this is times in general um, and all the different time formats that there are. Mm. But literally just within two specifications. So if you've worked with time, you've probably come across ISO 8601 before. It's kind of the standard format everyone uses. Um, but it is technically like a non-public document. You have to pay the International Standards Organization to get access to it. And then there is RFC 3339, which is a public RFC with similar, uh, but not identical time formats. Uh, and this is a lovely little site that just shows the overlap between the two and all the different time formats that they accept. And the updates in real time. It's so yeah, cool. I just realized they're real. It's cool. Every bit of this is scaring me. <laughs> I don't know what this is. You explained it and it went way over my head. And this is like the scariest scary movie I've seen today. Well, it's just all the different formats that the world accepts for representing dates and mm. times. The fact that we have this many. And this is just within two standards. I'm not looking at this. I'm looking away. Is this the X <laughs> is this the XKCD thing where we have 14 standards? All these all stink. We should go make another one, and now we have 15 <laughs> standards. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Though, That's... admittedly, ISO 8601 is kind of the standard that everyone's uh, stuck with, uh, and RFC 3339 tries to replicate it in a public fashion. Um, oh, the table updates in real time as well. Oh, cool. Oh. That is cool. This data, this visualization is pretty good. Someone bad. put a lot of effort into this. Yeah. <laughs> there is, you go. That was on my mind. Yeah. It came up in Hacking News, and I was like, that's really cool. What always gets me, and I don't think it's on here, is when you're formatting and you're doing, like, lowercase, if you want the full name of the month, it's lowercase MMMM, or, mm -hmm. or is it two Ms? I always get confused. It but changes depending on what you're working with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, but yeah, very cool. Very cool little site. I liked it. Uh, no one else has got anything in the dock, so... Yeah, who, somebody go next, because I have to see how it's laid out. Okay, Kim, what is on your mind? Um, what's on my mind is after the stream, uh, so every quarter, DigitalOcean let's its employees do like a hackathon for two days uh and it's it's hackathon day today and tomorrow and i'm trying to figure out how to do the hackathon and take care of some other stuff so it's just prioritizing work but i am hoping to work on something with chris and mason so hopefully hopefully we'll get that worked out Ooh, what are you doing yeah we we still have to meet about that <laughs> we oh, so about... have decided <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, I don't know. We had a lot of dreams, this de developer advocate team. <laughs> we want to bring one of the dreams into the world. <laughs> we will see which it. dream it is. Yeah. yeah. And pretty quick, because I think we, are de we have a deadline of tomorrow. Yeah, yeah tomorrow. <laughs> and like, yeah, the day is halfway over. So. I'll say you've half the day doing this. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, that's gonna be our thing now. But I do, all, I do like the fact that we get once a quarter. The whole company is encouraged, not just engineers, but everyone is encouraged mm -hmm. to do some hacks and present them and try to like, you know, make some new stuff for the company. And yeah. it turns out a lot of it ends up in production after a bit more tinkering. Yeah, yeah there's like been a few that I've seen that I really come want. up with amazing ideas. And yeah, yeah, I think the cross collaborative nature of it is one reason mm -hmm. it's so good. So. That's what's on my mind. It's hackathon. Chris, what you got? Uh, I've been like trying to redo my productivity setup, and I have found that I don't like digital to-do lists. Mm -hmm. And okay. I have been working with these like little cards. So I have this thing on my desk, uh, and oh, this yeah. thing sits in there, my little to-do list. Um, so that's been helpful. But now I'm going down this rabbit hole of just buying pens to see which ones I like. Oh no, so no, 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 no. It's a, that's a dangerous yeah. road. It's a I bad mean, place, man. Oh, it's a bad place. Ever spent a hundred dollars on pens? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have not. <laughs> I've got a fountain pen coming tomorrow. There are there's so like all like 
it's the weirdest thing but i i have a weird obsession with office supplies so like a trip to office depot i can i can easily spend way more money than is acceptable on things that i don't need um what, what, what should we talk about my sticky notes or like i have a stapler when was the last time you think i needed to staple something Ooh, those are pretty yeah i've learned about uh Mom, blog pens, which are like thousand dollar pens. Whoa! <laughs> okay, Chris, please tell me you didn't buy a Mont Blanc pen. No, no, no. I not yet. I not had yet, to spend definitely. the money on the MacBook. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It gets here after the MacBook, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't but get it. Cool. I don't get. It. I want to try one and then like return it, but. I doubt that's the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a Mont? Blanc store in Las Vegas where you could go Ooh, try one That's of them? a good point. Um, or a fancy store that sells those. It seems like if, if there, it would be anywhere, it would be in Vegas. If there is, I would love to see their security measures. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they like chain them to the desk like they do with uh, the computers at the Apple mm. store. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I will uh, let you all know what I find. Yeah, let us know. Uh, I don't get that at all. I, well, I don't get the thousand dollar pen thing. But I just don't I, get like finding a nice pen at all. Like a pen is a pen, right? Okay, we it's get it. We my get favorite it. one, the three dollar one. Those those are great. Those are like 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 I every year I buy my mom as a teacher and she uses those and I have them saved on Amazon. It's the G threes and it's a ten color set. Okay, oh, I love those. Yeah, and I this is what I take notes in and stuff because I color code my notes. Um, and I do all that, and like, but I can understand why Matt doesn't get it because he's too young. Like, he never had to take notes on pen and paper, probably. So I did in school. Don't anymore. You need all digital. Matt's yeah, so see. young, he doesn't even know what a pen is. Yeah. Is, is that? Is that? I, I feel like that writing though. It's it's proven to. Like, it does. A hundred percent. Yeah, things that you there's lots of research about it but yes there's, there's like, tons of it yeah i mean yeah. we're getting to a point where nobody's going to be using physical stuff in what two generations maybe some people some people think it's retro kind of like how like we haven't gotten rid of vinyls yet okay like if vinyls can still be around then pens will not go anywhere because <laughs> like we have a you know we're in digital space now but i will say so. i'm with you though chris on the whole not having a digital to-do list i have a notebook that sits next to me and i write everything in it see i got into a good habit of using todoist and i like it and it's the only to-do list i've ever used and i think it's because it gamifies it with those stupid karma points um uh, but i like it i will so. say the thing this notebook goes to me with bed and sits next to my bed at night mm. and i write stuff in there if i think of it in the night so i don't have to have okay. a phone with me that sounds very unhealthy um, I, but I I'll let you note, do you. note taking on a phone at night though is just like blaring. Yeah, so that's why I don't do it. I don't take a phone into my bedroom at all. I just have the notebook by my bed. So if I wake up in the night thinking of something, I can write it down and not stress about it. I have my phone toggled to black and white at night. That's a thing. Oh. Yeah, like, they have like an accessibility like feature. Um, yeah, they, I have like can... a, a dim mode on my iPhone. Yeah, or like a it's like a weird orangish color. Oh, you so. got the flux. Oh, I, I don't. Know what you're talking about. I do have flux, but I'm actually. I can just if I. I have it set up so one of my buttons. If I tap it three times on my phone, uh, it's black and white. It's very good for uh, reducing that addictive feeling that I have with my phone. Um, <laughs> so, anywho, Mason, what's on your mind? We've been we've been going on and on about pens and. <laughs> no, I, I I'm just enjoying it. these last two cloud chats have been fire, so it's been great. Um. <laughs> It seems like it seems like this is what happens when we all kind of lose lose our marbles a little bit. Um, I'm look I I'm look I'm I'm organizing Pi Texas like I've been doing a lot of this work and I did not. I mean I've I've organized large scale events like this before, not a conference, but I've done like competitions and stuff when I was in high school, and I just forgot how much work you have to put in to make a conference happen. So like I've spent the last week just back and forth with my designer, like getting the logo just right and making sure all that's going to be good. And then we're launching next week and I'm the one working on the website, which that just seems like a bad idea. Um, but this is what happens when you have a group full of Python people. None of us are front end devs. So I'm, it's, I'm having fun. It's interesting. It's a lot of work, but it's really rewarding work and I'm enjoying it. 
So that's what's been on my mind lately. That and I have peanut butter filled pretzels on my desk and I've been looking at them this whole cloud chest. Um, <laughs> like they're, they're literally sitting right here and I'm waiting until we, I'm trying to be good and not eat them right now, but they are very tempting. It's okay. You're, it's almost time. It's almost lunchtime. Yes. So that has been what's been on my mind. And now we can move into our final segment, which is our upcoming event segment. Um, for those of you that didn't see the thing earlier, we have our deploy conference coming up on November 16th and 17th. It's a global virtual conference for global development teams. You can register now, uh, view the agenda. Kim will be giving a great talk on an introduction to Kubernetes. Um, it's just a great way to watch a handful of talks and learn some really cool stuff. I'm going to play one more I'm not going to play a video because I forgot which one I played the first time. I don't want to play the same one twice. <laughs> so you saw it earlier. Register for deploy. It's coming up. Um, what else yeah. do we have coming up? Who's doing a tech talk next week? I think I'm on next week. Are it's you like, doing, are you on next week? I think Chris is doing, let me, let me pull up the calendar and see what getting Chris started is. with Svelte. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Or JavaScript. JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> yes. More JavaScript. Is it JavaScript or not JavaScript? It's JavaScript. Uh, Hacktoberfest is ending. You have until, Matt, you have the official stuff. You say it. Yeah. End of October, TM. Um, November 1st <laughs> at midday UTC, technically. Um, but yeah, you Matt basically have the weekend. Matt had to do a lot of time zone stuff to <laughs> make it work in the app. Yeah. No, but you, basically, you've got the weekend left to uh, get Hacktoberfest done. Um, we've mentioned this before, but you can... Your pull requests have to be accepted by a maintainer by the end of October, but they can still be in the review period into November. So get your PRs in and get them accepted by the end of October. <laughs> yes, Chris does a lot of Java. There's a lot of JavaScript. Kim and I are the back, are the are the infrastructure Kubernetes DevOps people, and Chris and Matt are full stack uh, and do a lot of stuff about that. So. I think Chris is more the front end half of the duo, and I'm the back end half. I feel that's we're, how it uh, works. we're uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> are you okay? Are you, are you okay there, Chris? I was. I think... uh, you said you know pretzels, and it it's, it's time. Oh, uh, it's over. <laughs> time for time for some pretzels. So. We have live streams uh, that we're still doing on Twitch, so you can always see Chris, Kim, myself. Uh, I think, Kim, have you already done your live stream this week? I did. I did, did it on Tuesday. Oh, I have one today. No, I don't. Yay. It's next week. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I was like, I was, I, I was worried about that for uh, for Shark Hack. We may get on Shark Hack. We may get on Twitch and stream some Shark Hack stuff. We'll see what happens. You may see oh, us yeah, later totally today. That. Mm, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, so you can come around, keep watching the, the channel. We've talked about our tech talk. So now it's time for the joke of the week. And I intentionally found a special somewhat spooky joke for us so Ooh. it's not really spooky but it's it's got spiders so uh what do you call two recently married spiders newly webs ah. <laughs> there we go yeah okay that 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 was a very pitiful laugh and i don't appreciate the pity so thank you everyone <laughs> for joining us in this week uh i hope you laughed at the joke unlike my co-hosts um and I will see we'll see you all next week for another episode of Cloud Chats. And just keep an eye on the Twitch channel. We may be live later today banging out some code. Oh, yeah. So we will see you all later. See you later. Bye, everybody.